There is a terrific debate underway at Queen's Park these days over the welfare of animals on farms. The government says it's trying to protect farmers and animals from trespassers. The opposition counters, saying the bill is a so-called ag-gag, meaning it would prevent whistleblowers from bringing attention to animal cruelty. To argue their respective sides, we welcome Ontario's Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, that's Ernie Hardiman, who is the Progressive Conservative member for Oxford, and John Vantoff, the NDP's agriculture critic and the MPP for Temiskaming Cochrane. And we should add, they are actually uncle and nephew. <laughs> and we welcome you two back oh, to TVO. Thanks, Steve. Good to be back. Uh, Minister, to you first. What problem is this bill trying to solve? Well, obviously, we've been receiving a lot of concerns from our agriculture community about the challenges, about uh, people coming in to demonstrate on their farm and creating what the farmers believe is an unsafe environment for their family. We have mothers complaining that they don't want to send their children outside to go from the house to the barn because of the, uh, uh, of the, the strange people in their yard that have no rights to be there. And secondly, of course, the risk they're putting on the, uh, the biosecurity side where they could very well be bringing in disease in from one barn to another if they demonstrate in more than one. And we need to protect the livestock for their benefit to make sure that uh, they are the, uh, the safest and the, uh, the best uh, animals that we can be. Is this and problem so widespread that it requires a bill at Queen's Park? Well, uh, yes, and I, I think that's the, um, uh, when we found out, it's been, it's been getting ever more aggressive and more often. And when we had the, the whole agriculture community come into my office and said, you have to do something to stop this from escalating even further. Uh, people are not uh, feeling safe in their home. Employees are not feeling safe working. <laughs> there because of, of that activity. And we, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the food sector, uh, we have times when we can't guarantee that the food is safe because of that same activity. If they go into a, uh, in a, uh, in a factory that's processing food, any food that is at that moment is not covered or not already packaged, when they leave, that food has to be destroyed because we cannot guarantee that we have safe food coming out of there. Okay, Those lots are the to type unpack of things there. We need to uh, we need to address. Lots to unpack there, John Vantoff. What's wrong with what the government is proposing? So the argument regarding biosecurity is a strong one, and the argument that farmers and people who work in plants uh, need to feel secure is also a strong one. But there's parts of this bill that actually overreach and can't actually be justified as biosecurity. There's a part in this bill where if you uh, are hired on, uh, um, f under false pretenses, according to, to, to the, so to the a, bill. As if you were a, like a, a journalist undercover uh, uh, yeah, or something. Yes, okay. that, that you, and if you left that, pre that premises and published a picture or a, an article, within two years, you could be charged. To me and to us, that actually has nothing to do with biosecurity. Because if you get hired and you are trained, the biosecurity protocol of the farm, and you always follow that biosecurity pro protocol and you leave for another reason, that's not bar biosecurity. That one is a stretch. And that is very pro problematic in this bill. Do you acknowledge that farmers have property rights and that those property rights need to be respected? Oh, yes, of course. Would you acknowledge that there are protesters that go too far and therefore it becomes a problem? I, I, in our opinion, when, when the, the safety of uh, farmers or their families is uh, um, when they don't feel safe on their own property and also when they're when and to me as a farmer as a former farmer uh, biosecurity is extremely important mm -hmm. and that you have to take that very seriously so there there is there has to be room for public protest but there is a line where that protest could cause uh, uh, the viability of our food supply. Do you acknowledge, Minister, that this bill, as the critic says, uh, may go too far and impinge on free speech rights, freedom of assembly rights, the freedom to protest, which we've had in this province I, only for I, uh, since time immemorial? I, 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 I hate to be the first one to disagree, but I, I disagree with the fact that this bill does. We spent a uh, considerable length of time making sure that everything we put in this bill is defensible based on the rights of both sides of the of the debate. Um, obviously, we want to, as the title says, protect people um, um, and to, so they can feel secure in their in their environment, and we want to make sure we have safe food. But we also want to protect the rights of people to demonstrate the people, the, um, the the rights of people to get their message out as they see fit. 
And I just want to point out that there is nothing in this bill, and, and I think John would agree there, there that um, the, the biosecurity part of the bill is, is um, a solid thing that needs doing. Well, he but, said he's on side with that. Yeah, you, you have that's consensus right. and there's on that. Nothing, so but that's there's not nothing the issue. Yeah, there's nothing in this bill that people can legally do today that they can't legally keep doing when this bill is passed. So if they want to have a protest, on, not on farm property, but on the county side road, for example, they near can, the farm? Can, uh, there is nothing in there because the bill is defined by uh, different from um, other areas where, where there's been some challenges and so forth. This bill is designed to deal with um, animal protected zones. So they will set zones where the trespassing law is changing uh, to give more enforcement to uh, uh, tools to law enforcement so they can enforce the, the rules in the animal zones. Okay, so let me that get... That would be in the barns, in the trucks, in the, uh, in the processing plants. Let me get the critic on this. John, in your view, is it, is it ever acceptable under any circumstances to get access to a farm under false pretenses? Um, I would say, um, and this isn't just farms, this is uh, food processing plants, and I would say on occasion, yes. Um, we have had cases in Ontario where investigative reporters have, uh, have gone undercover and have exposed issues. I, I, and the, the part about this bill is it's aimed at um, uh, people who have different views on animal agriculture, quite frankly, mm -hmm. than I do. But this bill doesn't just say, doesn't say animal activists. This bill is, covers everyone. And, and that, we're, we're, we're going a slippery slope on that one. Hmm. And if it was just me saying it, but as, as you likely know, there was an open letter uh, sent to the minister and to uh, Doug Downey, uh, the Attorney General, from uh, uh, many law. People know more about law than I do. Yeah. A lot of people know more about law than I do, quite frankly. And questioning that part of the bill. Not the biosecurity part of the bill, mm -hmm. but that part of the bill. Let me follow up with the minister. Would you acknowledge that there are circumstances when it is appropriate to sneak onto a farm and expose wrongdoing? No. There are never circumstances no, I, I when don't that's believe, appropriate. I, I believe we have, we have a society where if you want um, to um, find wrongdoings, we have police forces, and we now in Ontario, we have the strongest animal welfare laws in, in Canada with a whole new regime of, in, of enforcement officers who can come in. If someone believes something is happening inappropriately behind the walls, call PAWS. That's the Animal Welfare uh, Services. P A W S. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And PAWS will come and check that out. Let me find out from John. I mean, we've done a program actually on PAWS, and, and we had a a neutral third party, a professor from Brock University, come in here and actually give it quite a good review. Said she was quite encouraged at the possibility that it would do good work. But I want to know, it's brand new, do you have confidence that that's uh, the right approach so as well? So, pause passed unanimously. So, let's let you know. So, you do have confidence. I, but this legislation doesn't just apply to anywhere where, where the livestock are being held or being processed. So. It, it might be a totally different issue other than how the livestock are being handled that is covered by this legislation. So if, 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 if a worker in a plant sees something wrong, it's not livestock related, but it's in a livestock protection zone, mm -hmm. and goes to his management and the management says, get back on the line, th th there, there is, th this isn't just... I, I know the farm community is very focused on animal activists. I understand that. I'm a farmer. But this law, when you create a law, it just doesn't cover. It's not, it, the, the, nowhere does it say that it only applies to animal activists. Right. And, and that's where it's a, well, a well, bit you, of an overreach. You know the expression to, you know, to use a sledgehammer to kill a gnat. Is that what's going on here? No. Uh, I, I think, I think uh, again, we're missing, we're missing the point. There is nothing in this bill against whistleblowers. Okay, if there's, as John mentioned, if there's someone working in the plant, if they think there's something wrong, the law protects them from blowing the whistle. And now, if that person came in under false pretenses, then there might be some question as to whether they should have been there, but there will be no question about the whistleblowing in, 
and PAWS or the um, uh, CFIA who was doing the plants. Food Inspection to Authority. To come, you, you, to come and, you do and, and know, check it out. You do know a lot of this whistleblowing happens because people enter a facility undercover or on the assumption of assuming another identity or something like that. Will people still be allowed to do that without being punished? No. We, I mean, when our police force is out to try and, and, and catch criminals, they're not allowed to break the law to do that. Because when they got the court, that wouldn't stand up. And I believe we have that, our agriculture community has that same right. They need to be able to feel comfortable in their home, have a safe work environment. We have people on farms now calling us and telling us that their employees are, don't feel safe to come to work because of the process that happened uh, just a, a week or so ago um, at a duck farm. You may have heard about it, Steve, that mm -hmm. they, they came in there. I got a letter from them explaining what happened. What town did that happen in again? I'm trying to remember. Uh, in in uh, Stouffville. Stouffville, at, right. At um, uh, King Duck. north of here, right. Yeah, and, and they came in and disturbed the animals. Now, their protocol says that they never send up one more than one person into this, the loose housing barn. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a fourth-generation duck farm. It's the number one duck producer in Canada, and they produce them. Um, I was on a tour there just a couple of years ago uh, because of how well they do and all the environmental sustainability built into their operations. They come in with, a, with the, the cameras and the lights and a whole group of people, and all the ducks get rushed into a corner, and now they're all under veterinary care because they don't know whether they're going to survive because of the... To, of the, of the, of the uh, let me ask John if he wants to comment on yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I, I've toured King hmm. Cole Ducks, and, and that would be covered under the first part of the Act, hmm. you know, where they're in, they're trespassing, but the other part, where you could be charged two years after the fact, that won't help those ducks. Hmm. And the thing I'm, that we're most worried about is agriculture and food processing does a very good job in this province. And the first part of the act, they need. But if the second part of the act gets challenged and gets beat in court, it's the minister's reputation isn't really damaged, but agriculture is going to have to, have to try and repair the damage of, of this overreach is when there, they're actually doing a good job. Is there no question in your mind but that those provisions of the bill, which in your view would stifle free speech or stifle the freedom of assembly, those will be challenged in court? I, uh, judge, judging on that letter, I, I think the whole bill could be challenged in court, but I, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe anything that pertains to biosecurity is pretty solid. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you see that open letter from my over 30... A bunch of legal scholars. Yeah, yep. Yep. saying that, that this should be challenged when similar legislation has been challenged in other jurisdictions, mm -hmm. particularly the United States, there is a good chance that this will be... I, I think that the idea that will be challenged, I think I'm 98% sure. Whether it will, the challenge will succeed, that's, that's story, a risk for sure. I'm not willing to take on behalf well, of agriculture. I, 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 think, I, I think we all need to understand the, the present trespassing law has the same authority. Only it's from six months to two mm -hmm. years. So the reason, of course, for the length is we believe that it, there has to be deterrent from doing it in the first place. The risk is not the length of time and how long it takes them to come up with it. Mm -hmm. The risk is if they're going in there, find nothing, but they have still um, uh, caused damage to the, uh, to the livestock in that barn. We want to do everything we can to deter them from doing that. And we well, believe you... that part... We'll, we'll, um, we believe it's, uh, it's constitutional or we, we wouldn't be putting it forward. But you, You've uh, checked with the government's lawyers on this and you think you're on solid legal ground. Uh, I had the help with my ministry to, to prepare what we think will be a, a bill that will balance the, the needs of the, both sides to make sure that we keep our farmers safe, we keep our food safe, and we don't take away from the rights of people to protest in a legal manner. Okay, let me ask John about this point. The, the fines for violating this law, should it eventually pass the legislature, shouldn't call it a, a law yet, mm -hmm. it's still just a bill, the fine is $15,000 on the first offense and $25,000 for subsequent offenses. Up to, yeah. What do you think of those numbers? On the actual parts of the bill that we believe are valid, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. You're okay with on that? On the parts of the bill that we don't believe in are valid, 
that if you work at a facility and you work there for a year, you follow all the biosecurity protocols, and then a year after you publish a picture that the owner of the, of the processing facility doesn't like, that you can be charged then $15,000? No, I don't believe that's valid. You prepared to compromise on those numbers? Well, I, 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 don't think, um, I don't think there's a debate about the numbers. I think that... Uh, well, he I just said there John, was. No, I, I think John uh, says the maximum, mm -hmm. and obviously it isn't the bill that gets to decide the maximum, it's the judge that hears the case. And so I think um, mm -hmm. the, the challenge or the, the, the subject that John is talking about, I think it's, it's quite um, uh, likely that if those circumstances were there in front of a judge, the judge would decide whether those numbers are right or wrong. It, okay, they're a maximum number. Sure. I think, I think um, again, I think it's so important to make sure, uh, I hope that no one ever has to get charged or has to pay that fine of any of it. But we have to have it in place to make sure the deterrent is there so they don't just do it. I really believe that there are an awful lot of people that are involved in the, in, in the protesting that have no idea the risk that they're putting our livestock to and the risk that they're putting to our food safety. Do you agree with that, John Van Tuck? Um, I would, I believe that there are people who, who have their views. I, I also believe that we are locked in, in a, a battle of, of wills and minds of people who believe in animal agriculture and people who absolutely will do everything they can to stop it. Mm. That I, and I, and I'm going to be upfront. I, I believe in animal agriculture. I'm a farmer, mm -hmm. but there are people who, who very strongly believe the other side, and I, I'm not sure that they will be deterred by this legislation. In spite of the size of the fines and so on. Okay. Well, I, I, I I think, I, yeah, if I could mm -hmm. on that, sure. on the size of the fines, there's another part of the bill that I think is very important, mm -hmm. that, um, that we believe that the judges should have the opportunity to um, ask the people who cause the challenge, if they do go in mm -hmm. and contaminate that they could be charged the cost of doing that. Yep. When people, when the same people that John just talked about, when these people realize how much that could be, I don't believe they know that today, but I think if they started looking at how much that could be, um, I think that would be a real deterrent mm -hmm. for making it a big crowd for this next demonstration. If, if I could add something, Please. we were talking about judges and one of the aspects of this bill, and if you look closely at the bill, if, um, so if, uh, Protesters come on the farm, uh, ask them to leave. If they don't, ask them for identification. And then you can proceed to citizen's arrest. Hmm. And you can use responsible force. The issue is, what's responsible force? So they're going to say, well, Section 23 of the Federal Criminal Code, fine. And the minister can find that, and I can find that, and I'm sure you can find that. But in a heated uh, situation mm -hmm. on a farm... With, with very determined protesters, dedicated, and with farmers feeling threatened, and their and I was going to say my uncle, but the minister, <laughs> the, the minister, the minister okay, said yeah. they were feeling threatened, <laughs> yeah. and, and there's no one around. Could get ugly. It yeah, could I, get ugly, and <laughs> what could happen is the farm family, the farmer who, who, and, and who is provoked in going beyond what is responsible, he, he or she might end up being the first one in court. And, they're, 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 and, and I'm still looking, I'm still looking for who is going to run the education process to guarantee that all farmers know what is responsible because the, the animal rights folks will be conducting those, those education I, sessions. I, I, I just I, again, I think that um, no disrespect to my uh, my good friend, but um, the bill does exactly what the present trespassing act says, using reasonable force. That's there already. Mm -hmm. The identification of what is reasonable is not there. When I talk to people, I spent all last week going across the province talking to people about the bill, and when they say, "Well, what more? What can we actually do?" Nothing more than you can today. And if my asking for my advice, you do absolutely nothing unless you have to defend yourself until law enforcement gets here. That's the, that's the whole thing. Let's, but those things aren't changed from I the gotcha. present trespass that's act. we, we got says. a few minutes to go here, and I want to just understand where things are at right now. This bill has passed 
Second reading? No, it's no. presently, they're debating as we're speaking. Okay, <laughs> and where, where's it at right now? It's on, on second reading debate. Now, he's got a majority government. He doesn't have to change one comma, one period, one paragraph in this bill if he doesn't want to. That's right. He can get it through. But if, you know, if you were able to go to him one day and say, Uncle Ernie, indulge me. What's one thing you'd like him to bevel his edges on? I would like, I would, uh, we would like the government to pull the part of the bill that is, could be deemed as anti-whistleblower. And because that will be challenged in court, whether it wins or loses in court, farmers and food processors who are doing the right thing now will, will be battling. If they're doing the right thing now, why do you have to overreach? And, and the government, it's not a surprise that the government tries to overreach, but for, for, for farm organizations, for farmers, they don't need that part. They're already doing a good job. Can you imagine, even though you don't have to, you have a majority, can you imagine, in order to get more buy-in, compromising a bit on the language that's in there right now that he finds offensive? Well, obviously, the, the reason that you have second reading debate and then committee is that what you hear during second reading debate and what you hear in consultation um, gives you the opportunity to make some changes to the bill uh, when you get to committee. Having said that, we prepare the bill to what we believe is the, uh, the, the right balance between the, the, the needs of all the people involved, and we believe that that's what it is. So, um, Wouldn't the bill have more legitimacy if you were able to get the opposition on side? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more concerned about um, making sure that we end up getting a bill that, that, the, that the industry is uh, satisfied that they can be safe in their homes, that they can let the children go play in the yard without worry, and that there's less risk to their animals, and that we actually have the safest food in the world. Mm -hmm. We have to have a bill that does that. I believe that some of the things that, that uh, John is talking about um, uh, have some merit, but I also understand that what we have to do is we have to build a deterrent in it that people don't put the animals at risk. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I think we've t talked about the whistleblower. I firmly believe that the bill allows the whistleblowers, if they work there, if they see something's wrong, they, it, the rules are exactly the same. They don't get that right okay, from this get, bill. Okay, they okay. get that right under, <laughs> okay. the, under uh, the criminal code. M Minister, is he like this at the Thanksgiving table as well, filibustering <laughs> worse, away? Worse, worse. Um, <laughs> last word to you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with the minister on protecting farmers, protecting the industry. But one thing that the minister failed to say is I also want to protect the confidence of consumers. Because at the end of the day, farmers are, wor are in a battle for the hearts, minds of consumers. And anything that hurts, that has any potential to hurt that confidence, in the end, is going to hurt farmers. Understood. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for transporting your debate from the legislature to our studio and sharing uh, your views with our audience, who I think now more a lot more about it. Ernie Hardiman is the Ontario Minister of Agriculture. John Vantoff is his agriculture critic for the NDP. And we thank you both for coming well, to TV. Thank you very much, Steve. It's mm -hmm. great to be here. And I thank John for uh, uh, <laughs> working with me in getting this bill on um, this far. Uh, he didn't agree with everything. but And he's, uh, he's still the reason I'm NDP. <laughs> <laughs>